Seeing no further introductions, it's therefore time for member statements. The member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks, Speaker. Uh, Saturday, I attended the North Grenville Rural Summit, which put the spotlight on Eastern Ontario entrepreneurs and innovators. It was great to spend time with people creating jobs and bringing investment in our rural communities. I wish every Ontarian living in an urban centre could have been in Kempville with me on Saturday. What an incredible opportunity for them to understand that rural Ontario is more than just the blur they see from the car window as they travel from one city to the next. They could see how agribusinesses are succeeding despite challenges like increasing red tape, local infrastructure needs, high energy prices, and access to skilled workers. Their perseverance and determination is incredible, and I'm thankful that they had the opportunity to share their stories so we could learn more on how we can better support them. The summit was the dream of North Grenville councillor Jim Bertram, a true champion of rural Ontario. Jim recognized our rural communities and the businesses sustaining them are too often taken for granted, and he wanted to do something positive to change that. Unfortunately, Speaker, uh, Jim is uh, battling an illness, and he couldn't be there on Saturday, and our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. We wish him a uh, speedy recovery. Speaker, we all know farmers feed cities, but with the right support from a government that appreciates them, our farmers and rural entrepreneurs can help make Ontario grow. I want to thank Jim for his uh, vision. I hope that this summit becomes an annual event in North Granville. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Speaker. Thank you. For the, member series, the member from Windsor to come see. Speaker, let me tell you a little about a good friend of mine. His name is Ron Jones. He's 73 years old. And next month, he'll be graduating with a BA in poli sci from the University of Windsor. To appreciate Ron's success, we have to go back to his high school years in the 60s at Low Tech. A football star, Ron was asked what he was going to do when he graduated. He said, become a city firefighter. A guidance counselor basically told him to forget about it, because he was a black kid and a nobody. He'd never be hired as a city firefighter. So he could set his sights a little lower, perhaps, on becoming a garbage collector for the city of Windsor. Well, being told he couldn't do something was all the motivation he needed. Ron Jones became the second black firefighter in the city of Windsor. He served for 35 years, retired as a district chief. Along the way, he spent 12 years as a public school board trustee. And after retiring from the fire service, another 12 years as a city councillor. He's battled prostate cancer, and now he's all set to graduate with a university degree. Not bad for someone who has fought racism most of his life, was Howard McCurdy's first campaign manager, got to rub shoulders with icons such as Rosa Parks and Muhammad Ali. Speaker Ron Jones still isn't ready to set back and count his blessings. He's already enrolled at an accelerated paralegal program at St. Clair College in the fall. So, Ron, buddy, you never fail to amaze me. Here's a salute from Queen's Park. All the best, my friend, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Member Member for Barry. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, April is Cancer Awareness Month. Spring is the season of renewal and hope, an ideal time to reflect on the progress that's been made in the prevention and the treatment of cancer. In the 1940s, three out of four Canadians with cancer died within five years of diagnosis. Today, that statistic has flipped. Five years after diagnosis, 60 per cent of Canadians with cancer are still alive. This is incredible progress, yet there is still a large amount of work ahead. On average, 24 people are diagnosed with cancer every hour in Canada. One out of every two Canadians can expect to have a personal battle with cancer during their lifetime, and one out of every four Canadians will ultimately die because of cancer. Cancer does not discriminate. It affects people of all ages and from all walks of life. It is not one disease, but many, and can affect every part of a body. Because of its complexity, there will never be a single cure for cancer. That is why research is so important. 
Unfortunately, according to the Canadian Cancer Society, 60 per cent of the high-priority research projects went unfunded in 2016. As a cancer survivor, I encourage everybody to donate to life-saving research, to wear your daffodil pins with pride, and to work towards a day when people in Ontario and people around the world no longer have to fear cancer. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. Caledon lost a friend this week. While I considered Bill Ray a friend, I didn't socialize with him unless you included the hundreds of community events we attended over the years. Bill taking a picture or two, reporting Caledon news for the Caledon citizen. We would often compare our schedule for the day, Bill joking about how he'd never go north of nine because it was outside of Caledon. Bill would probably be called a workaholic, but I'm pretty sure he was doing exactly what he wanted to do. Bill was a person interested in and engaged with all things Caledon. The last time Bill interviewed me, he was supposed to be on vacation. And yet he made the call, did the interview, wrote and submitted the article, all on vacation. Always a professional and always willing to put in the hours to make sure the story was accurate. I don't know what Bill's political affiliations were, and frankly, I didn't care. I didn't care because he never inserted his opinions into the articles he wrote. For Bill, it was about making sure the readers were given the unbiased information they needed to make their own choices. We were lucky that Bill chose Caledon as the place to write our stories, share our passions, and track our history. And for that, we have Beth to thank. It was Beth who captured Bill's heart. I'm sorry he won't get the time he deserves to spend with the special lady he met and married in Caledon. Rest in peace. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. And I want to introduce you to good people of River Valley Park in the Sioux North area. Approximately 35 homes is what you'll find there. And these families, as of May the 1st, are being ordered to vacate their homes from uh, by Algoma Public Health due to the failure of a non-compliant sewage system and public health concerns. Now that's a fact, Mr. Speaker. Ministry of Environment and Climate Change have been working with the owner to reach compliance. They have worked on the draft ECA, an environmental compliance approval, and identified an FA, which is the financial assurance, that is needed. However, the park owner has been unsuccessful in securing these funds. That's a fact, Mr. Speaker. Here's another fact. These are homeowners that own their home, and they may look at this as not a big issue for 35 families, but this is a huge issue for people that live in my area. We, and I say we, can do a lot better, and we should not permit this to happen, and we need to step up to making sure that they are not pushed out of their homes. I'm happy to hear that the park owner will be meeting with government officials this week. I'm also happy to inform the good people of River Valley Park that I will be meeting with the Minister of Municipal Affairs, Northern Development and Mines, and the Minister of Environment and Climate Change on Tuesday of next week to discuss it. We have to step up. And here's another fact. There will be a much higher cost and social cost to removing these people out of their homes for the long run for all of us on this issue. These families deserve better from this government. These families are in my writing about women Manitoulin, and we have to help them. Thank you, Speaker. And I rise today to showcase the fantastic girls in grades 7 and 8 at St. Anthony Catholic School and St. Helens Catholic School for my riding of Davenport, who took part in the Girls' Government program through my constituency office. Girls' Government is a non-partisan program run by Equal Voice, which helps get young girls interested in politics. I'm delighted to share with you the bright young women whose work has made this program successful. Haley Furtado, Amber Stiles, Marion Asher, Alexia Alexiu, Sienna Lori, Donetta Leticia, Noelia Ritana, Alexis Desa, Era Nicole Perez, Sarandra, Cassandra Mann, Faith De Quintel, Melissa Roselle, Mafalda Fresco, Christina Riri, Maria Elena De Cruz, as well as their teachers, Mrs. Irene Rodriguez, Ms. Fiona McGrath, Ms. Laura Negro, and Ms. Uh, Elisa Ribello 
Principal Fatima Formaris and Principal Maria Manuela Sardo and Tunes. These girls work closely with their teachers, my staff, and myself to learn about politics and select an issue to champion. They engaged in lively discussions and debates and voted to address homelessness as their issue. As residents, the girls see the effects of Toronto's affordable housing crisis all around them. They further decided to focus their advocacy on how homelessness specifically and disproportionately affects women and Indigenous people in Toronto. After much research and discussion, these bright girls wrote, a, wrote and sent a letter to Minister Milchin indicating their concerns and ideas on the ways to rectify homelessness in Toronto. This is my third year running this program, and Mr. Speaker, the energy from the girls from St. Anthony and St. Helens Catholic School reminded me of the importance of my role as a female politician in this legislature and the first female MPP for the riding of Davenport. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from the PM Carlton. Thank you very much, Speaker. Um, I rise today in great sadness, as many Canadians have, after a weekend where we saw not only Jonathan Peet, the toughest young man to ever, ever come out of eastern Ontario, die from a very painful disease of EB, and then to wake up the next morning to find out that 15 young men tragically were killed as they went to play hockey from Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Speaker, as a hockey mother myself, I have been often inspired by Jonathan Peet, and since Saturday, inspired by the generosity and compassion of all Canadians. I want to just say that I've never seen our country come together quite like this, and I grew up in a small mining town that lost 26 miners, and I feel very badly for those who have been left behind. Uh, and who will struggle, particularly in Saskatchewan, uh, to rebuild their community. But Canadians have really stepped up. I noticed that millions of dollars have been raised. Many hockey teams have either provided a moment of silence or even gone one step further for both Jonathan Pete and for the Humboldt Broncos. On the weekend, a picture was drawn by Kerry McGregor of Canada, which I think tells the entire story of the tragedy that our country is going through by having the Humboldt players reach out in heaven to Jonathan Peet. We've seen Tom Cochran, Chronicle Herald, and many others across the, uh, the province here and country uh, reach out to all of those who are affected. I know, Speaker, tomorrow many schools, including my daughter's own, will be wearing jerseys, and I encourage every school in Ontario to make sure that they wear some type of a jersey with a number on it to, uh, to support this team. And I know this legislature has done a moment of silence, and I know probably tomorrow we'll want to wear their jerseys as well. And I just want to, everyone to know that we're in solidarity. And to those who started the Put Your Sticks Out for the Boys, um, I think that that is a very telling and meaningful way uh, to provide a tribute and some solace and comfort. But again, on behalf of the residents of Nepean and Carleton, and certainly the hockey family to which I belong to, my heart and my prayers are with Jonathan Pete's family, as well as all of those who are affected by the tragedy in Saskatchewan. Thank you. Thank you. Further member, statement of member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I'm thrilled to rise today in support of Fetal Alcohol Awareness Advocacy Day at Queen's Park. We are joined by many advocates from across the province who have worked tirelessly to make this day a reality. Thank you to everyone who attended our reception earlier and for taking the opportunity to have meetings throughout the day. FASD is an umbrella term used to describe a range of cognitive and developmental disorders that are caused by exposure to alcohol in utero. When a woman becomes pregnant, alcohol consumption can pose a significant risk to the fetus and result in fetal alcohol syndrome, partial fetal alcohol syndrome, alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorder, and alcohol-related birth defects. While FASD has proven difficult to diagnose due to its complexity, early prevention is key. It is estimated that one out of every 100 people may have FASD, meaning that as many as 130,000 Ontarians may be affected. Recent studies suggest that this number may in fact be larger. Last December, my motion to establish September 9th as Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Awareness Day passed unanimously, and I thank all members for their support. Shortly, I will be introducing my bill to help support students living with FASD in schools. This bill serves to complement the motion by encouraging boards to establish best practices and foster greater collaboration. There is more work to be done. 
Today is about learning from those with lived experience, parents, families, friends and organizations, but it is a single step in a movement that's been a result of literally hundreds of individuals and hundreds of hours coming together over decades. Let's keep it going. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What an honour for me to rise today and recognize the Community Foundation Gray Bruce, who have raised $1.8 million in support of local students who are pursuing post-secondary studies, skills upgrades, workplace training, apprenticeships, or trades education. On March 23rd, I had the pleasure of joining the chair of the Foundation's Board of Directors, Maureen Selecki, along with Executive Director Stuart Reed, fund holders Lyle Love and Kim West, and Ambassador Stein Furness at Georgian College in Owen Sound where they announced the $1.8 million education fund to students competing at the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program's Regional Skills Competition, the very people who will be able to benefit from this community effort. Community Foundation Grey Bruce has a strong record in supporting a variety of non-profit organizations in our local community since 1994. I think part of their success lies in the fact that Bruce and Grey are very caring communities where people do step up and help out in any way they can. I am humbled and honoured to advise my siblings and I set up the Gene Walker and Marjorie Mole Scholarship Fund, which now provides bursaries to students studying community health care or nursing. And my friend, colleague, and MPP, MP sorry, from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, Larry Miller, did the same when he and his wife set up the Larry and Darlene Miller Agricultural Bursary Fund to support students in agriculture and agri-food studies. All of these funds, scholarships, bursaries, and awards are searchable on the Foundation's website at www.payforschoolgraybruce.com. I invite all members to join me in congratulating the Community Foundation Graber's team on reaching this significant fund goal and expressing our gratitude to all caring individuals and families who stepped up to contribute funds to support local students in their chosen education pathway. I wish the Graber's, uh, Community Foundation Graber's continued support in all of their pursuits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank, you. I thank all members for their statements. It is therefore now time for reports by committees. The member from Northumberland, Quinn.